And actually, she starts by by suggesting uh, that science could make a better fiddle, and that upsets the violin world because, of course, they're copying Stradivari for three centuries now, thinking that they've got the, per- the he he perfected the craft. Um, but she's suggesting, first of all, that it was okay to apply science to the woodworker, wood, the woodworking shop for the violin mm. maker, and the violin maker was giving her a hard time about the fact that she might be demystifying the art. And she used to laugh at that because um, she said, of course, you can't separate acoustics from music. Music is yeah. science, and sometimes we forget that. We, we, we marginalize it as art only, but we can't separate acous- acoustics from music. Interesting. So she, she creates uh, what's called the Swiss cheese violin. What was that? One of her most dramatic uh, experiments with Saunders, I think that might have been after Saunders, was a Swiss cheese violin where she punched 64 holes in the ribs of a violin and then plugged each full hole with cotton. And then as she and Saunders were playing that instrument, they would pull cotton out and see what happened to the sound. She always said that, that we did the right thing for the wrong reason because they thought originally that they were studying the wood modes. And then they realized that maybe the more important thing to study were the air currents inside the box. And there might be hundreds of air currents. And Carlene spent 50 years studying basically two, the, the relationship wow. between two different ones. Because, you know, we always hear it was Stradivari. It was great because he had the right wood and the right pattern. And you're saying she discovered it was the air that was really that, Yeah, that actually uh, we could look at the violin as a wind instrument. The other thing people forget is that Stradivari was, in fact, a contemporary maker. He wasn't copying anybody. He was making instruments. So in his time, you could buy a contemporary instrument from Stradivari. And what's happened, hence, is that three centuries, uh, violin makers have thought they had to just copy yeah. Amadi, Guarneri, and Stradivari. And she was suggesting that just maybe we could go further than that. So she does some more research. She does some experiments with Christmas glitter. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, Ernst Kladny was the phys- was the German physicist who started um, sort of showing the footprints of sound by taking plates. This is like the 1780s. He published a whole um, uh, paper on it um, where you could take sand grains and put it on a plate and then vibrate the plate at di- different frequencies and different geometric patterns would form. The parts of the plate that's vibrating, the sand falls away from to the nodes where the the plate is not vibrating. So it becomes these beautiful geometric patterns at different frequencies. And Carlene decided to try to try apply that to a free violin plate, which is a top or back plate that's not connected to the ribs. And then uh, you, when she saw these different patterns, she started to use it as a guide to where she had to keep carving the plate. The, the luthier is always looking for that ratio between um, stiffness and flexibility, which has to do with carving that plate in a, in a meticulous way. And, and Stradivari, Amati, she was always saying that they, the old Italian masters had learned to do it intuitively by touching and tapping, and uh, that this was merely a guide to help modern luthiers do it more consistently.